800 likes because it's October. Now look, I know that talking to yourself could be a little weird to others, even though they all do it in secret. It could be a situation that caused them to think so much, so they start translating these thoughts into a sound, and that sound is called a conversation. That conversation takes place in your room, or walking around the whole house. At least, in my case, when I talk to myself, I make sure I walk every inch of the house, and could last for an hour sometimes. And if you thought that's psychologically sick, then wait until you hear the next part. Sometimes I make deals with myself and talk about personal life issues while peeing. It gets even crazier, but I don't want to expose myself anymore. So let me link the junctions and reveal the secrets. And maybe change my diaper. I have been wearing it for a week. I look taller when I'm sitting at this point. The next video might look like a real life example of me when I'm talking to myself. And it is. Some security guard, who for a split second, or that's a bit too fast. Let's say for a moment, he looks like any security guard doing his night shift. But who is he talking to? Well, he thought he was helping an old lady until his friend did exactly what people did to me when I thought I'm in my comfort zone. They exposed me. His mate asked him what he was doing. He started explaining how his wife isn't allowing him to do things in bed, so he has been horny lately and had to do it himself but his mate was talking about the conversation he was having. Anyway, the friend who informed him found out that his work colleague needed therapy. And Dave, the security guard, he ran to his wife.
I bet this guy will not go back to his job anytime soon. I don't know what he saw, but I had a similar experience when I was 11. The difference is that I didn't go to the grocery at night alone for several weeks. Here is a typical paranormal video where a Hispanic guy becomes a panic his guy after an incident. Even though he didn't actually panic, I just thought it would be cool to say what I just said. But it's actually cringe and ridiculous. Let's get to the story. We don't have a story. What a shocking surprise. But there is an interesting detail I'm forced to talk about. No, seriously. There are like two folks threatening me to say this. You know how in every paranormal investigation video in which the place has doors, these doors have to slam. You know how they became a standard. And how to this day you're still rejected by every girl you admire even before you say a word. Anyway, so usually, doors have to slam, but not in this one. This is the bug in the matrix, a phrase that every teen uses nowadays to sound more intelligent. This door doesn't move back and forth. It slides right and left. We, as humans, we are very familiar with these kinds of doors. But what about our fellas from the other side? How are they gonna deal with this shit? Well, I guess we have the answers here. They aren't so stupid after all, and they can deal with all types of doors. So Maltino calls his friend Diego. And by the way, that's his friend's real name. I didn't make that up. He called him to tell him about the incident. Not because he was about to shit himself if he stays alone for one more minute. <clears throat> dove ho visto lo spirito la prima volta e volevo chiedergli se ne era capace, se era possibile far qualcosa per far capire la sua presenza. Eh. Cioè, non lo so, forse era già chiusa prima, non l'ho visto. Oh, ok. La porta si è aperta, adesso non lo so, però magari il vento o tutte quelle cose... Sei lì. Eh. Ragazzi, siamo davanti a un qualcosa di strano. Cazzo, c'ho fin paura a entrare. Spirito, se ci sei, fammi capire che ci sei. Bene, ragazzi, quindi sono stato chiuso dentro in una stanza. Diego! Oh. Vieni un po' a vedere sto cazzo di video, io sto cagando addosso. Cioè non lo so, cioè, ero qua tranquillo, beato come una Pasqua e ho sentito un rumore strano, cioè, e poi adesso, boh, non lo so, ti, ti faccio vedere, cioè, eh, ero, eh, 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 I don't think this is as easy to stage as you may think, because the echo in this house is so loud I heard my own voice in the video while I was editing. I know it's unbelievable, but of course I'm saying the truth, I don't lie. It's like saying, trust me bro. Ian and his weird ass name. Ian is just like you and me, a normal person who eats normal food and breathes normal oxygen. Of course, normal food and oxygen under the new standards, because if we come to reality, what we are eating and breathing is more corrupted than the new generation. Or maybe that's a bit too far. Let's say it's more masqueraded than girls after makeup. The comparison is still unfair, because I once thought I encountered a real alien, till I found out it was just a girl with no makeup. It was truly a scary experience. Regardless, back to Ian. Ian is a man with a plan, and his plan according to his channel description is to challenge himself to know Nut November, and to investigate scary places. To me, it's my house. 
Just cut the electricity on me at night while I'm alone and I'm already in a horror movie fighting for my survival by trying to stay in the house so no one thinks I'm a pussy. Ian went to investigate a haunted Muslim. I mean, a haunted mausoleum. So what did he encounter? Let's put the spotlight on the lighter part of this sequence. The tapping. Ian didn't tap out as a way of him giving up and freaking out. Like someone when he is in a submission move. I'm talking about tapping sounds coming from one of these mausoleums. But the more interesting part of this experience was the emoji. Yes, fellas, there was a floating emoji captured beside one of the graves. Jack, if you can hear my voice, I know you're here. Tap on this window. Tap on it just like this. I don't know, guys. It seems like he's gone quite. Oh my god, that scared the living daylights out of me. I have no words to describe what just happened. Smiling Jack is definitely in there. He's in there right now. After taunting this spirit to make its presence known, it finally did once more. I unfortunately was frightened to the point of calling it quits. However, I can at least say that I managed to capture this encounter on camera. I don't know guys, it seems like he's gone. Whoa, what the f Oh my god. Oh my god, dude, I just caught a face. Holy shit. Oh my god. Dude, I just caught a face in there. Oh my god. I had just photographed this stunningly clear floating white face inside of the vault. Oh my freaking god, I gotta look at those. What's eerie is that the face appears to be smiling, much like the urban legend suggests. It is smiling. It's a smiling face. And I just captured it. This encounter left me stunned and fairly creeped out. But I was not about to leave. This is what I call a happy ending. Someone who died with a smile on his face. He was so happy his soul still smiles to this day. I bet he wasn't married. Guys, it seems like he's gone. I don't know, guys. It seems like he's gone. I don't know, guys. It seems like he's gone. I Have you ever woken up in the middle of night and thought to yourself, what the hell did I just see? How come I take a shit and don't wash my hands afterwards? But then you feel something heavy under your ass. And in moments of terror, you remember that you forgot the dildo inside before you went to sleep. That's a special case, I guess. But maybe this will sound more familiar. Have you ever woken up in the middle of night to use the bathroom? I know you're so advanced, you don't have gentle areas anymore. And giving birth has become something from the past. Now going to hell is the new way to live. If you know what I mean. Here is Michael, who is a normal person just like me, so he still has the thingy. He decided it's time to call for duty. He wanted to use the bathroom very innocently, no intentions to jerk it off, but he was met by a bottle of shampoo awaiting for his arrival. Now you may think Mike was tempted to take a shower, but the dirty bastard had other ideas. He took his phone out and cried about it like a weenie for TikTok views. I don't even know what to say right now. Got up to go to the bathroom. What the fuck is going on in my bathroom? What's the fuck that bottle in here for? What the fuck? What the fuck? 
Hello? Who's in there? What the fuck? Holy fuck. What the hell's going on? What do you want? Jesus. I can't even breathe right now. This is absolutely ridiculous. What the hell? What do you want? I mean, show yourself. Nope. Oh my dear God. What the fuck just happened? I wonder what kind of shampoo he uses. It could be something very special, unique and pricey, or something so cheap it doesn't have weight, so it floats. In a world where everyone is following Justin Papers and Dua Lopa, a world where the Ouija board is becoming more of a traditional Friday night family game, there is still some hope for the forgotten game and the forgotten spirit behind it. The Charlie Charlie interrogation game still holds a special place in my heart. So now that's what holds a special place in my heart. What a waste. The next video was titled, The Girls Are Playing the Pen Game. With all my experience and knowledge with the adulthood, and with my wild searching history, I have never seen a video titled this way, and I know what kind of objects women's use for that kind of activity if you know what I'm talking about. I have once watched a video talking about an adult star who used a knife. Disturbing. But then I came to reality and realized I'm on YouTube, so nothing to be worried about. I clicked the video with full confidence, no headphones or anything like that. Full volume and surrounded by every member of my family. And they started moaning from the first second. Not my family, the girls in the video, or should I say, the girls in my imagination. So that's why I had a second thought and made sure it was what it promised to be. A video of three girls playing a simple Charlie Charlie game, and Charlie loses his mind at the end. <laughs> Si hay alguien en esta habitación, bueno, tenemos que estar serios. Sí, perdón. Si hay alguien en esta habitación, que por favor se manifieste. Mueva la lapicera. Mueva la lapicera, se manifieste. Para mí que tiene que hacer bien las preguntas. Bueno, va de vuelta. Como decía el video, ¿hay alguien en la habitación? Ay, no, boludo. Se está moviendo. Ay, está para se movió, para. Ah, no quiero jugar más. No, para, en serio, fuera de joda. No me como un carajo, deja si ya no vuelvo. Miremos una P. No, para, no, pero si ya está, hay que hacer, hay que hablar. Yo no quiero que quede acá nada. Se queda acá, Marín. Preguntar si es una persona mayor. No, si es hombre. ¿Sos hombre? Ay, por favor. Se está moviendo. No, para, en esto no joda. Pará, no. me estás usando eso, una mujer. ¿Alguien la está moviendo? No, no. sí. Si la... ¿Sos, de, ¿Sos de la zona? ¿Sos de, de no, acá? ¿Sos de Bursaco, sí, sí. No. Pará, ¿querés hablar con nosotras? Si no te mueves, no. Se quedó ahí, no sé. ¿Querés hablar con nosotras? ¿No querés hablar con nosotras? Pregunta otra cosa. ¿Estás enojado? No, no, 
I know the translation was so accurate you thought you don't know English, but here is a thing for those who will say one of the girls moved the table. How? Because I didn't see any of them moving a bone of their body. I will bring you back in time to the days when you used to be happy, the days when life was better, and I'm already in tears while farting just remembering how much happier I used to be back then. Anyway, here is a video from a very old paranormal investigation show that I have absolutely no idea what it is or which year it was aired. But it's so old, that's for sure. It's from an era where these hunters, if you want to call them that so, where they used to have an investigator personality. A look on their faces that screams horror and says, I have diarrhea. That's me actually. But a look that says, I'm about to find the truth and hunt the Jews. A time where these men looked serious and to be relied on, not like this modern era of ghost hunting, or so they call it. It got so soft, even James Corden did it once. How embarrassing. So what's the story here? Well, as expected, I don't have a story about the video in particular. But I have a funny one about me finding it. So I was desperate looking for the sixth clip to close my list. I felt homeless, and for some reason my clothes were torn. And I was hungry and dirty until I woke to the reality that I'm actually a homeless person with a laptop. But that's a lie. So while I was searching in the garbage of Facebook, I found this masterpiece of a video and took it with no hesitation. I was so happy to find it my tooth almost fell off to create an innocent smile on my face. There is a Spanish narrator explaining the story, and from what I understood, I couldn't understand a word he said. So I figured it out myself. Almost. It seems like this family has been dealing with the possessing of one of their members, which could have been attached to him by a ghost that lived in the house for a long time. It um, came off the floor, or nearly a half inch, I should say, and I saw it slide off to the right, about three and a half to four feet, before it came to rest. Um, I checked to see whether or not it could possibly have slid along the floor. I placed a marble on the floor to see whether or not the marble would um, go in the same direction as the chair did, and it didn't, it didn't roll at all. Um, I checked for wires under the cushion of the chair, and I could find no explanation at all. And this was actually the result. You'll hear here uh, the whistling, first of all, and then the barking. And here is this Barking here is quite extraordinary, actually. I then said to it, you can whistle. I then, uh, as I said on the tape here, I then said to it, if you can whistle and bark and groan, then you can talk. And I asked it to actually say my name. <laughs> I want you to call out my name, my complete name, Morris Gross. See if you can do that. Hello. 
Very good. Let me hear you say my name again. Come on, let me hear you say my name. I was going to ask the same question as I asked earlier. How many voices are there? Six hundred. Six hundred the voices. I know the joke. How uh, many really are there, Margaret? I think so far we've had ten Three. Um, sensible voices. But the rest of the names are absolute rubbish. What about the voices? When when did the voices start? December the twelfth. December the twelfth. Yes. And how did they start? Well, one night Mr. Grove was talking about it about eight thirty. He said all we need now is the voices to talk. And that night I went to bed. Um, I can't remember exactly what happened. What's that knocking? Yeah, that's you can hear it now. I was doing that yesterday morning and Peggy was on her own. So she came in to us because you know, it wasn't her, she came in. We sat together and we heard it. And I counted down many knocks and there was fourteen altogether. And it's doing it again now. Knock one for no and two for yes. Are you a male spirit. One for no and two for yes. Two. That's two. You are a male spirit. Did you used to live in this house? You did. Was it? Was it more than 50 years ago? Yes. Did you, did you die in this house? Did you pass on? You did pass on in this house. Now why are you here? Are you unhappy? You're not unhappy. But why are you here? Is it because you want to give us a special message? No. You don't want to give us a special message. Now what happened in this bedroom? Well I heard a noise downstairs. I come up, and there was the eldest girl on the floor. But the other one's missing. So I look under this bed, I look under this one, and as I stand up, I see it. There she is, across this radio, one leg in the air, and her head hanging down. Just to prove that I wasn't mad, I yelled for my wife to come up to see what I have just seen. But she was asleep. In every story of things that go bump in the night, there are two possibilities. One, that it's a hoax. Two, that there's something going on beyond the grasp of the human mind. If this is a hoax, it means that some of the 17 people who've seen things have been playing an elaborate and twisted joke on the others. If it isn't a hoax, it means that either those 17 people have all been having hallucinations, including the police, or, this is the best documented ghost story of all time. Now, now, I ask you the question again. Two knocks for yes and one lock for no. Now, yes, that's right, you understand. Now, do you enjoy upsetting this family? You do. Well, now, will you please go away? because I think you've had enough of your jokes. You won't go away. But I would like you to go away, and go away,
because I think you've been upsetting this family long enough and it's time you went away. Do you understand me? Please go away. Yes, you must go away. It's absolutely essential that you go away. No, you mustn't be obstinate. You must go away. Well, you must. I'm sorry, but you must stop annoying this family. You've had enough. You've had a good time. Now, please go away. All right? Please go away. I can't say any more to you now. Goodbye. Goodbye. So how is there going to be a guy hiding in the house for a long time just to prank the family by tapping on the walls? And I hope I'm not mistaking about the possession part, not because I want him to be harmed. I'm a very nice guy. But if it means he will prove me wrong by being safe, then let him experience something new. After all, this is an old video. But I'm sure he is possessed. I'm just as sure about that as I am about his gender, which I'm suspicious about. And I'm also not so sure you have subscribed.